Hello, I'm Alan Cumming, and I've just talked to Cara, and I um, have uh, wasted years of therapy. I could have just come on this podcast and been completely sorted out. Beautiful. This is Kara. Welcome to Really Famous, where you get to know your favorite celebrities on a really intimate level because, you know, I was a therapist, so that's how I roll. This is my talk with Alan Cumming, which we taped last year in New York. Alan, of course, is a huge success in so many ways. You know him as Eli Gold on The Good Wife, the MC of Cabaret, for which he won a Tony Award, and so many other roles. He has appeared in everything from GoldenEye to a one-man adaptation of Macbeth to Spy Kids. He also does the introduction to Masterpiece Theater, and he was on Doctor Who, Sex and the City, Frasier, and he sings two albums, one performed at Cafe Carlisle. Plus, he's a major supporter of LGBTQ rights. Alan has a memoir, which we talk about, called Not My Father's Son. You can pick up a copy through my new Amazon storefront. I'm now an official Amazon influencer, which means I have my own page where I can share my recommendations and favorite things with you, like celebrity memoirs I love, fan gear from the best TV shows, and what I love and use every day. So yes, Alan's memoir is included and you can get it right now. Just click on the link in today's podcast notes. And by shopping on Amazon through my link, you're also supporting Really Famous, which is amazing. And I thank you in advance. And now my talk with Alan Cumming. Someone said to me, so do you have those FAQs up on your website because those are the questions that you really like being asked or the ones that you never want? I said, what do you think? Yeah, yeah. I think you, I think you answered them in that way, though. Or you, yeah. you had like a little preface, like these are the questions that I'm answering right now so you don't have to. So, yes, I'm doing you a favor. So. Well, it's so funny because I thought that was so original. Um, I always try. I never want to ask the same questions. That's part of my whole thing. I like to just have a conversation about whatever happens to come up. Yes. So what, you have a thought? No, I was going to say that often, you know, journalists say, now I'm sure you've never been asked this question. And you, and I, I always go, I'm sure I will have been. Don't, you know, don't set yourself up for a fall. I am <laughs> sure that happens all the time. I yeah. think I might actually have something that's different. Oh, okay then. <laughs> Challenge accepted. <laughs> yeah, yes. All right. So this is what I thought of last night. What? I said, maybe I'm going to take a little spin on Alan on this podcast and I'm going to bring up some like proverbial sayings and see what you think of them. Oh, all right. So if you agree, disagree, sure. if you have a personal experience with one, okay. what do you think? That, let's do it. All right. Have you been asked that before? No, no, you're, this is, you're winning. Yay. Okay, good. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. Okay. So how about a, le- a leopard cannot change its spots? Yes. Um, I don't like that. Uh, people usually always say that basically to cover up some bad behavior. So um, I always, I always, I've got negative associations with that one. Like, what do you mean? Well, it's basically like, you know, it'll be like some, somebody in a relationship will be a dick. And then the person says, oh, but a leper can't change his body. Like, he's never going to get better. He's never going to be a better So it's like boyfriend. a boys only boys kind of thing? Yeah, that's what I think about it as. It's, some, some, it's sort of one of those things that's used to sort of validate bad behavior. So was there, you said it, it hits you personally for this. So is there something that you're thinking of, like an example that's coming up in your mind? Um, well, I suppose I think like a terrible relationship I've had and I, you know, you, uh, there was one particular where you have to sort of, I, I sort of walked away from it thinking this is not going, I can't change this person. I can't make them better. I can't fix them. And I think that's, that I, person is, Oh, I'm not going to tell you. Oh yeah. No. You sure? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. so you tried to change that person now. I think, I, I think I realized, uh, there's been three people in my life that are were angry people, and I one of them was my father. And I think I've after you know so my, that happened in my childhood, and then in my adult life with two people, one man and one woman uh, that were angry 
people that I felt f I was with them because I felt the fam I enjoyed the familiar of being with someone who was angry. Oh, that's I, I understood how to do that's that. That's so human behavior. But then I also was trying to fix them, trying to make them not angry. Like, you know, I can do this. I can make you. And of course, eventually you, and the, uh, the good thing about getting older is you realize you see patterns right. and you realize that, no, you can't, you can't make angry people not angry. But you know what? That's interesting. Cause now you're kind of agreeing with that saying. I am. Yes, I am. That's what I was, yes, I, I yeah. am agreeing with it and I don't like it. Oh, okay. So, right. So first you were saying, I don't, I have a bad reaction to it because it's used as an excuse. Yeah. But on the other level, it's you also get true. It. Yeah, yeah I it's get also it. true. Because also if it's someone who's, I mean, there's a difference between just someone who's behaving badly, but someone who intrinsically is an angry person who's not, who's always blaming the world for their, you know, f uh, things are going wrong with them. It's, al it's always like th they're not taking responsibility for themselves. I suppose that's the thing I don't like about it. Mm -hmm. that not, and, and it's been interesting. Both those people in my life, I've met at different times and uh, like the, the, the one of them I saw quite recently and a, a thing happened and exactly it was like I thought oh my god you've not changed a bit you know you've not you still are furious you're still lashing out and still sort of creating these situations it's, it's, it, was, it was really so um, as much as I don't like it the, the leopard thing I actually understand it yeah yeah well that is interesting too because that's such a normal tendency for humans I think to take what we're familiar with and what we know totally. even if it's dysfunctional or unhealthy or not good totally. yeah. and then you just, just don't realize familiar. you're doing it but you're looking for people who repeat that yeah absolutely that's, that's what I did as soon as I my first sort of adult relationship was completely about trying to you know surround myself with an I be with an angry person so an your father person. was pretty angry yes yes very I know I'm sure you've talked about that a lot so I don't want to ask you the same questions about it um I wrote a book about it actually I know yeah so I've, I know yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do that but <laughs> right. at the same time it's like not everybody listening will have read your book <laughs> but it's all right I'm gonna take the challenge accept it but he was angry and um and then you found yourself when did you realize that you were looking for that or like to repair what you grew up with. I, I suppose when I came out of the second adult relationship where that was that, I sort of uh, looked at my history mm -hmm. of relationships saw and saw a pattern. Yeah. And decided to break the pattern. Yeah. Did you see it yourself or did somebody point it out to you? No, I think I saw it myself. I mean, it's hard to tell, you know, therapy, lots of therapy over the years. So, but I think it was, it's definitely something I look at now when I, I, I'm, I, I forgive myself. I think it's absolutely understandable and, uh, and it's, and it's almost noble in a way, you know, it's quite good to sort of think you can try and make people, I, I mean, I wanted them to be more happy people. But so you took it on yourself to make them happy. Yeah. And it didn't work. No. <laughs> what did you do to try to make them happy? Um, love them, give, make sure, give them things that made them comfortable. Try to anyway, you know, um, just sort of subsume myself, hide my joy. That was something I did as well to not make them feel bad about things, you know, because usually if something great happened for me, that would make them feel bad. That's another thing. So the, you have That's to like... That's a red flag. Totally, totally. So you have to then... Well, what I did was you sort of, um, you know, play down everything that's... So you don't really get to express joy because you're m monitoring yourself always in case someone else is... Mm. It's not good. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't suggest it. So I've got... I, yes, I've, so I've overcome that. Okay. And now you're married right now. You've been married for a while. Yeah. Grant, time. Grant, an yeah. illustrator. He, he did this T-shirt. Oh, but that is so cool. Sometimes yeah, you gotta throw bricks. Yeah, this is the Mar Pride. Marsha P. Johnson, who was one of the trans uh, women who started the Stonewall riots. Right. So we're gonna kind of give away the time frame here because it's probably gonna run a few weeks from now. Oh, but or it's gonna if we talk about. It. You've been busy all week. Obviously, I've been watching you on Instagram. Yes, I'm exhausted. <laughs> like, you look fresh. It's got, I'm I've got like makeup energetic. on. <laughs> what? But what? So I've got makeup on. Oh, oh, it doesn't look like you do. It just okay. looks like you're you're like somehow an Energizer Bunny or something. Well, I'm a bit of that as well. But that was in your FAQs too. I think is he a graphic designer? No, oh, he's an illustrator. Right. Very different. I know. It gets so bad. it's because when we got married. My publicist at the time, because basically we got blackmailed um, 
by a, an outlet which basically said uh, to us, oh, we know that you're getting married. We found out you're getting married. We know what it is. So unless you give us the, the exclusive, um, we're going to print where the wedding is. So that would mean that all people could go and paparazzi could go and everything like that. It was terrible. Um, so this, so basically we had to sort of, so stupid, had to give them the, you know, who was there that was famous, what I was wearing, la la la. And uh, so that they wouldn't spoil the wedding for us. And then... Uh, so you the, did it? Had to. Yeah. So, you, had to, you know, it was the night, it was literally the night before we were getting married or the Friday and we're getting married on the Sunday. And, um, but this just shows you how shabby these gossip sites are and gossip people, uh, what they'll do. And, um, and so anyway, because of that, um, it got out, of course, they published it and uh, other people asked. So basically People Magazine uh, said, oh, would you like to make a statement about it? And, so this uh, was People Magazine that bribed you? It wasn't People Magazine that bribed oh, us. It was okay. another, another one I'm not going to name. Don't give them the... No. Um, but because of that, we made a statement. And in, when that statement was released, my publicist said that Grant was a graphic designer instead oh, of an illustrator. Yikes. So it's the biggest thing that could have happened in terms of, it was you know, a huge story. We were, it was quite early on in terms of same-sex marriage and still wasn't legal in this country. And that was one of the things I said, you know, we got married in London first. And I said, I hope, hopefully we can, we look forward to the day when we can actually be married in the country where we live now and blah, 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 and uh, stuff. So we made this nice statement, but then she said he was a graphic designer. So that, uh, that was the, the maximum exposure that he had ever had you know and and so it stuck for a while I can't believe that though because it does seem like such a small detail that like it must, why it, it was repeated it was probably repeated in writing it was a totally lot. like a million times on the yeah. internet like if you just it often it happens all the time I mean just things like over the years things like that have happened to me that you know various things I mean I guess the good thing about social media now is that you have a a, a recourse an immediate recourse about things which before you didn't right or and like if things if there's things on your IMDB page or your Wikipedia page that are just wrong yeah people just believe it you know also I think that like younger people don't even understand that they're wrong that Wikipedia is wrong yes. I had to actually talk about my to my daughter about this like she's 19 and I was like she said, quoted something from Wikipedia I said no 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 you can't quote something from Wikipedia it's wrong yeah. and she said no no you don't understand it is reliable now I said no you are so mistaken you and cannot also, what I think so often about <laughs> Wikipedia is that you have to like if there's things wrong and I go oh I say to my office oh can you tell them it's wrong and I go well they, they, they feel they need a, a, a source and like it's me right. I'm the source I know <laughs> but you need to have said it in print or something to a get a secondary them. source I can't believe when you're I, I mean I kind of get it they're trying to make it independent blah 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 but look if that happens I'll do it for you oh, well, I'll be the you. independent well, source thank you, you so much you tell me what you need to a change a source close to Alan said and I will but it's like just crazy people just can them. go on and do anything they like that's not that's so weird that you can't do it yourself um, so what are some of the things that, that, has, that have happened with the press you were saying things over the years oh um, like well the news of the world and then the, when that was on the go that's that trashy awful Sunday newspaper that was you, you know it's eventually closed down but uh, Rupert Murdoch's <laughs> baby um, they said that I had accused my father of sexually abusing me and I hadn't and he didn't but that was pretty awful can you imagine and I wasn't like it was I didn't I wasn't it was a time when I well I wasn't seeing my father I didn't have a relationship with him and, and then all journalists are camping outside his house saying that I'd accused him of sexual abuse and then it was on you know then it went to the other newspapers and and that was a long that was like in the early maybe late, eight, late 90s so it was long before social media and all that and that, and that was awful it took a long time for that to go away and I got an apology but in, in, in the, not in the News of the World, but in one of the other newspapers that had carried it, because the, the, the lawyers said, don't think you're ever going to get oh, anything from, not from the News of the World. They just, they just have a fund. They had a fund specially set up to pay, you know, to counter the lies that they were telling. They, 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 they're not, so they're... It's a business, it's a profit loss thing. They know it's an expense that they're willing it's to... It's expense, yeah. Their legal fees for... So... Uh, but so it was really important for me to sort of show my dad, you know, I was trying to do something to right this wrong. And it, it was awful. It was really awful. That was terrible. What did you do? Like, how did you handle I got, that? I got, I managed to get from the newspaper, the, the Daily Record, it was called, this one in Scotland. I got them to apologize. But like in, in a little thing in the letters page, you know, three weeks later, 
Nobody reads that really anyway. No, but it was like good. I was able to say to my dad, oh, look, I, got, I did get this. But, but it was like a thing that until he died, he, it was a th- that he kept talking about that, that this. Did he believe you? Yeah, he believed me, I think. Um, I made it perfectly clear, you know, I, I called him up and everything, but, um, and then when he brought it up, like I didn't see him, I didn't speak to him for another, you know, many, many years and he, and he kept bringing it up. And I, like, I was like, but that's not, I didn't ask those reporters to go there. I, it's not, I did not, you know. You had no control over that, that was at not all. My, under my, and it was not my desire either, you know, because, but uh, yeah, it was awful. That was really awful. But how did they just, so they just make things up? Well, what, what they did was, I mean, it's really interesting how the, how sort of little, the Chinese whispers almost, but in that instance, I'd done an interview for Out magazine in America and I'd said <clears throat> that my f- brother and I it was kind of the first time I was starting to talk about stuff that happened to me in my childhood and it was just all kind of forming but I said that my brother and I had gone to my uh, to my father um, and confronted him about th- things he'd done to us when we were little and that and that's what they took to say to mean sexual abuse oh, so they took a little leap there they did a good leap yeah Crazy. I always worry about that too, I have to tell you. As a, because I know, I realize that I, as a journalist, how do you, as somebody who's about to like, face a journalist, how do you trust that person? Well, I mean, I think you... You, do, um, you don't, right? You don't. You can't. I mean, you can. You have to, of course. But you, it's, a, it's a lottery. I really think it's a lottery. Like, you know, I've had situations where, like, we seem to be getting on great and i looking in your eyes and I think you're, I can tell you're a decent person and all that stuff. But then I've had felt like that and then gone away and then like a week later the thing comes out and it's, it's, it's a like, hatchet job. Really? Just, it's, yeah, or just saying really mean, or misinterpreting things or choosing to slant things a certain way. And I just think it's... Um, you know, it's just part of the job. I think that you've just got to try and hope that things will be okay. Right, and be and available enough. Be, yeah. Right, you don't want to close yourself off don't completely because you, you can't. That you, as in your, as part of your job, I guess you have to do it. But at the same time, I, it's, it's a balancing act. I would yeah. imagine. And you've got to also think that you know. I think in the past, I realized that being coy in, invites speculation. So oh, actually yeah, yeah. being completely open about things is for me has been the best way to deal with it because there's nothing that I, I don't feel I've had in the past, you know, when I was in certain relationships or something, I sort of tried to be a bit circumspect and it just invites people, especially in the British press, they get, you know, that's when they start going through your trash. Oh, yeah, I've had that as well. I had the Daily Mail going through my here. trash. And, so what did you look at your window and there was somebody there? No, my neighbours told me. <gasps> And then um, they said that they were shouting up saying, oh, you know, have you seen Alan come home late at night with anyone recently? Things like that. And then like the, the, the person I was had been with, uh, they, they were, she'd got TB and uh, they were saying, they were shouting up, she was recovering from TB and they're shouting out to her letterbox. We know that um, Alan's left you for a man and you're having a nervous breakdown. We'd love you to tell your story. <laughs> I mean, just stuff like that. She's there coughing away. Just dreadful. Oh, my God. And my God. ex-wife uh, got doorstepped for years after that as well. It's and The British press are horrible. I really do, could not even imagine. I feel like that doesn't even happen anymore, but I guess it does. I don't think it's... It doesn't happen not here. It's bad here. It's not as bad here at all, even though it's a much more celebrity-obsessed culture. Right. Why is that be? I think, in a way, it's, it deifies celebrities in a way here almost too much. Um, Whereas in Britain, it's slightly... You're... You're you're not deified. You're you're on a you're on a shaky pedestal, and they could bring you down. At and any they time. want to they want to even the playing ground or I something. I think so. Yeah, it's just much more of a history of that's how they they operate things. Come in. Push in. Push the door. Yeah. Oh, hello, Hi. Patrick. Come on in. Oh, this is a delicious cup of coffee. Oh, good. Do you have food too or no? Mary, oh, good. Oh, okay, Thank you. Me. Delicious. All right. Thanks. Mm. Um, so what do you have an Americano there? Black Americano. Okay. Black and strong like my men. Okay. Um, oh, I was going to tell you too. Sometimes it's interesting. It's totally different experience for me. But sometimes I have that thing that you're talking about where I sit down with someone and mm. look each other in the eye and I feel like, oh, we're really connected. Like this is a really good thing. It's positive. Yeah. And then afterwards I feel like either I'll email them or something and I'll say, oh, here's the episode and I won't get a response. 
Uh, and it surprises me because lots of times when I do connect with somebody, you, it's legit. Yeah, yeah. But when it doesn't, when something like that happens, it that always it, throws me off. It's so weird. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Because you feel like you should be able to, you know, an authentic interaction, right? I think so. Yeah, I do. I do think so. And I think, and I think also you get better at it. You can see an angle. Yeah. You can see an angle coming. You know what I mean? I've, once you've done 75 million interviews in your life. Right. You know what I mean? You can see, I think, oh, I get it. I know where this is going. And, and also, you know, like in my, in my, in Instinct, my the TV show, I, I the whole thing is that I love is like it's great we're, we're not you know the, the fact that he's gay is kind of just and also and it's actually not the most important thing about the show and it's so great that we've actually got to desensationalize someone's sexuality just like they're here's, here's, here's this character and also they're gay you know blah blah and that's just the way whereas of course I talk about it endlessly it's the first thing that everyone, anyone ever asks me about the, the right. across Europe talking about it thank you very much um, talking about it for weeks so it's I, I, you know stuff like that you get right. you think, I, I'm, I'm talking about the fact that this is not a big deal <laughs> right. so it's ironic yes but don't think I didn't think about that too ah. when I'm researching I'm like okay so this is obviously this whole it was written everywhere like thank you it was written everywhere like uh, you know the first what is it main it's character first leading character gay. in a network drama and a network, gay. exactly yeah, yeah. so Beating. like I'm like that's of course, that's the first question everybody's going to ask. Yes. So you can't ask that question. But I'm not also a question person. I'm more of a conversation yes, person. Chitty, chitty. Hang on, put my thing down. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this looks delicious. So this is a... Uh, it's some avocado toast with some delicious uh, arugula and um, seeds okay. and salt. Mmm, might just munch this. I can talk and eat. Though. Okay, okay. So... Um, yeah, so the same questions don't don't like that. Okay, now I feel like I got off track a little. Okay, I'm going back to my list. I was going to say, we're going back to like that. Should we yeah. do that? Okay. Uh-huh. So, absence makes the heart grow fonder. Absolutely true. How, why? I just think that, like recently, hang on. Mm. What was Recently, I was away, I was saying, on this press tour for two weeks. And, um, and I've been... Traveling a lot before that with my husband, and I was a bit like, oh, looking forward to being a bit of time to myself, and you know, you know, people get, you know, you sort of get annoyed by your loved ones. Yeah. And uh, after those two weeks, I was really. I remember it's actually a really good. I've, I have a good job in that I go away sometimes, you know, on a film set or whatever. And when you go away, you really you have some time to yourself. You meet other people. You have, you feel independent, but also you real you understand why you want to be with someone and what, how much you miss them and how much you why you want to be together. So it's actually a great thing to come back and yeah, yeah, feel that again. So absence does make my heart grow fonder. Okay, and his too. Does I can tell with him as well. I can tell by I can tell by the way we communicate when it's like really starting to better or just the, 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 the t- when we're away and we're talking on the phone or video, you know, FaceTime or something. You can tell when it's actually starting to be kind of a physical need to see each other again. Mm-hmm. You want that. Mm, Does yeah. he work from home too? So is he... Yeah, he's got a little studio in, in, his, in our house. So he's... Um, yeah, and when I go away, he's like a little hermit. He kind of sits and draws with the dogs at his feet and just draws all yeah, day long. Yeah, yeah. He probably of... gets a lot of drawings done, mm-hmm. I would imagine, especially <laughs> when there's no distraction. No. Um, I'm sure there are other distractions from the dogs, but not the same thing as no. having you there. Not and true. when you're, if you're not working, I mean, I guess your hours are pretty intense, though, when you're filming. Oh, yeah. Crazy so hours. that's like, right, so it's a network show, so you have 20-something I mean, like, episodes, and you're the lead. Well, no, we did 12. We don't oh, do 12. half a season. It's oh, actually okay. really great. Thank God. Because, you know, if I was in 22, I'd be, <laughs> wouldn't be sitting here, I'd be in a yeah. sort of oxygen tank somewhere. Um, but... I think, uh, but the hours, it's, it's interesting because I always think you shouldn't, it's not good to go and, and sort of complain about, oh, how tough you work because you get paid lots of money and there's lots, many great things about it. And it's fun and nice people. But when we, if we do a 12 hour day, we're like, ooh, we got off early. Really? Yeah, yeah. I know. Like regularly crazy. 13, 14, 15 hour days, like from the time you get picked up until the time you get home. That's normal. And I just, I think I worry, like, you know, that's why I, one of the things about on, on the set, wanting to make sure everyone has a good time and is happy and feels good and we dance. I play, you know, we play music and we dance in between takes. 
because I think, gosh, these people don't see their families. How, you know, how can you, you know, there's such a high rate of divorce in, in the film industry. Yeah, because people don't see... Don't don't see the the people. So not just among actors, but also among like crew. Because when you think about it, if you're working yeah. 13, 14 hours, uh, five days a week, and also you know it's the, it's not like a, the same time every day. Mm-hmm. You start at five o'clock in the morning on a Monday. By Friday, you could be going in at three in the afternoon, and working until like five in the morning on Saturday. Yeah, that's tough. So that really screws up with any kind of uh, schedule you have with your family. Right. Plus, also, they're not, it's not the reward may not be as. Um, obvious for them to put in all of those hours mm. too. Whereas at least you're getting some attention, accolades, whatever else, pay. You know, whereas probably for a lot of the well, crew. I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean the crew. I think on I think on 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 network show you get paid pretty well. I mean, but not you're not getting paid as much as the actors. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, not sure. Oh, okay, so they do get paid better than if they were on some like yeah. yeah I mean, I think it's Netflix pretty well paid the comparatively thing. You, yeah. It's, and I think that's why people put up with it because they can right. maybe then they don't work for a few months. They take a few couple of months off or something so they can see their family that way. But nonetheless, but yeah. it's crazy. It's, it's a crazy lot. hours. And I just think it's really important to make feel, people feel um, that they're wanted and they're appreciated, you know? And, and that's it's, it's an easy thing to do. But you'd be surprised how many sets don't seem to have got the memo. Really? And just people feel disgruntled and yeah. You know, I mean, it's, it's interesting being an actor because you, you have loads and loads and loads and loads of work experiences. Like, you know, in the course of a year, I can be on, um, I don't know, 10 sets to 10 different sets or theatre, you know, lots of different working environments. Whereas most people, you know, you tend to work in an office or whatever in one place and maybe you'll change it to get another job. But you won't do it the, the regularity that someone like me does. Mm-hmm. So you get lots of glimpses of how working environments work. And it's so interesting to be when you have a chance to actually dictate one and create one, how you how easy it is actually to just make people have a good time. So why doesn't everybody do it? Exactly, because they're stupid. They're not thinking, they're, they're thinking, thinking of themselves probably. Think, they're thinking of themselves and they're not, it shows they don't, they don't think it, that other people's time is, is as important to them or other people's experience is important. But what they're stupid about is that they don't realise that when other people are happy, they're, it makes your life happy yeah, exactly. and makes them feel they're going to be better at their job, they're going to be more give more input into it because they feel valued. Yeah. It's, 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 it's easy, really. Everybody wins. Uh-huh. But it's true. I feel like that in general, too, like, why can't everybody just be nice in life? I don't oh. really understand what is the purpose of not being. So I know everybody doesn't feel the same way or think the same way as I do. But to me, it's like, it's natural. It's what you do. And it's not oh. hard. So I don't really understand why everybody isn't doing it. It's weird, isn't it? There's some people can't be open. My mom always says, like, talking of saying, she also goes, it doesn't cost, it doesn't cost anything to be nice. Mm-hmm. And it's so true. Like, when so you think true. about it like that, what would be, what would you rather have? An experience where it was fun and people were nice and kind or an experience where people were bitchy. Do you know, I mean, just really, it's just dopey. Do you find that though, that in uh, the majority, or maybe not majority, but just most people aren't like that? I think, well, I think I go through life and I make people um, be positive. I actually, I bulldoze people into being kind and nice. You do because I want. How? I want. How I do just. You do that? I go into a room and I go, "Hello, I'm Alan. How are you?" Uh, uh-huh. And I go and I say, "Are you all right? You seem a bit grumpy. Is anything wrong?" And I can do. Oh, so you're tuning into them, mm-hmm. which is big. People do appreciate that. And I see people of a very I can I can walk into a room and I think, "Oh, he's he's a bit like this guy's thinking. Who's that dick? Who's that dick celebrity dick off telly? What's he's he's got an attitude towards me already." I understand. Read me. Uh, you're 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 um, you're very open. You're very nice, kind. But I think you're also. I, I sense a little bit like you're. You sort of think there might be a puzzle to me a little bit that um, that you're wanting to work out. Oh, interesting. <laughs> I love that, it. I that, love is the that quite accurate? Well, yeah. I don't know if. I mean, I usually am thinking everybody's a little bit of a puzzle. Mm-hmm. I was a therapist. Oh, wow. So I think that may be what you're picking up oh, maybe on. Maybe that's what it is. Aha. Uh-huh. Oh, that makes sense then. That's my approach. Oh, I see. I get it. I love it. To people in general. Um, interested. And I know there's complexity 
and there mm. are thoughts and experiences for everybody. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. I know that and I'm intrigued, I'm interested and I want to get to know the person. Mm. That's always my, um, my overarching, I guess, perspective is like, what's this person really experiencing in life? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's actually, that must be what it is then, actually. Yeah. That's so fascinating. So when, why, did, why did you stop being a therapist? So I just started writing on the side. It's like a long story, but I was going to write a self-help book. And, but I had never been published before. So what I got back from literary agents was you have to be published to be published. <laughs> so I started being published in magazines. I and then it just, I just kind of loved it and uh-huh. kept going with it. And here I am. And now, have you given up your um, license and things? Yeah, no, I'm still licensed. So I'm much is licensed costing? in the state of New York. <laughs> <laughs> so you could, this could be, this could be a session. You could be two, uh, two birds with one stone. That's hilarious. Yeah, I've not been able to go to my therapist this week. Actually. That's right. That's right. So, uh, yeah, so that's my, that's what you're getting, I guess. It's a good read. It's an interesting read. And that's part of why I think uh, it's kind of as a conflict with being a journalist, right? Because I want you to be open and free. It's not a judgmental zone here. Mm. This isn't, I'm going to catch you or I'm going to be judgy. Mm. It's exactly the opposite. So that is something that I really, really wish I had more control over because I understand that you can come in here thinking, oh, I never know. What's she going to do with what I say? Right, yeah. Well, that's interesting that you're... So sort of modus operandi is to make try and make the person feel comfortable enough just to be open without yeah I think yeah. it's interesting I I, I uh, more and more I just think about therapy has helped me so much in my life I mean I really some of the yeah there's, actually I'm going to London to do a play at the end of the year and the, and I really want to I must do that I want to look up the therapist that I was had um, you know, in the, in the sort of late, mid 90s, who really helped me, like really kind of. Please do that. You want to a, tell him or her? Is that it? Is that what you're saying? I want to go and, I want to go and tell him, yeah, just how, how. Do it. How amazing he, like, and how I still, there's certain things that he said to me during that time that just come, almost saved my life, actually. I have to tell you that somebody recently did that with me because now I'm more public because of the podcast, right? Right. So on social media, somebody had reached out and told me that I think he was surprised to see me doing the podcast now and being out there in this way rather than as his therapist. Mm -hmm. And he said, like, you real, I can't tell you and thank you enough for how much you helped me during this period of time. And I really didn't even know if I had helped him. So it was so nice. It felt so good to me to hear mm. that. I encourage you to do it. Don't I think go, that yeah. so often when people impact us positively in life, we don't, we think it and we know it, but we, we don't necessarily that. tell that exactly. person. No, it's a very good thing to yeah, definitely and I think to it's do. a nice thing to hear. And you know what's funny about him as well? He was lived in this house, this sort of skinny house, and it was in the attic room. So it's kind of under the eaves and he'd always be sitting on this chair and I'd, I'd be sitting opposite. And then, and then one day I was walking along the street and I saw him and he was a giant because I'd never seen him standing up. And, <laughs> and he never like, greeted you at the door. Yeah, because it was a tiny little room. I just come in. He'd always be sitting there. Uh-huh. And um, or he would say, "Come up," and but by the time I got up the stairs, he'd, he'd have sat down again. And um, then I saw him and I was just like, oh, "Holy shit!" He's like a you know like a Norse god. That's funny. Yeah, it's always funny seeing a therapist in, in outside of the room. Yeah. Really weird. One, one I had once came to a screening of a film I was in. <gasps> that is weird. I thought that was weird. It, was it a current therapist? At the time, yeah. Oh, uh-huh. it was. Yeah. And he or she did not tell you that they were going? No, I mean, it wasn't. I, I, um, no, because she came with someone else. She came as like, she came with somebody else who, someone I knew who was also a patient of hers. And then she, and also she came up and went, hi. And I was like, oh my God. And she went, yeah, like, you know, I'm not, I'm, I enjoyed the film. I'm not here. I'm not here. I mean, they did that. And I said, like, why did you even do that? Why did you just go? Yeah. But I thought, I thought that was weird. Very awkward. And I didn't go back. Well, I remember being in grad school and I remember a professor telling me because she lived in the city, it was at Columbia. So she's living in the city and she's giving an example of, she'll be on the subway and she'll see one of her clients or patients or whatever you want to say. And her thing was, you just don't even acknowledge the person. If they come up to you, yeah. fine, yes. but you don't acknowledge it. And so that stayed with me the whole yes, time. So that's what my one says yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was really weird. Yes. But still, therapy has been very helpful for you. Immensely. 
Yeah. But it depends on how, what you put into it also. Totally. And also I think what, you know, if you're right, like the first person I had when I thought, oh, I need to see a therapist, you know, and that was so not in my... I didn't grow up with it. I mean, it was, it was a huge deal for me to go to a therapist. It was like I was really in, I felt I was in trouble. It was like not a thing of, oh, you know, I'll try that. It was, that was nobody I knew did it. Nobody, well, some people I knew did it. Nobody in my family, nobody in my background ever did it. Like even now, my mum, I think, if I mention something about therapy, she kind of gasps. I'm like, you know, like there's something wrong. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. I think she associates it with a, stigma. A, a time. Well, yeah, in a time in my life when I was, there was something wrong. And so. But oh, she so she's sensitive to that yeah, for you. But the fact that I've just done it all the time, I kept doing it. Yeah. Like I sort of think of therapy as like going to the gym for your mind. But why? So, not why, but so then what? I guess, how did you get yourself to do it the first time then if it was really like a thing you wouldn't do? It was because I was in a state. I was in a real state. What, what? Like you couldn't. I was just sort of a, uh, I knew there was something wrong. I was unhappy and I was sort of remembering having these memories of things that happened to me and, and just was in a me- And I was, I was ostensibly having this great time in my life. You know, I was this new successful little starlet. Everything was going great. And yet I wasn't, it wasn't really, I wasn't happy. And it didn't, and then, and the therapist I had then, <laughs> she would do this thing, it was a tiny little room, and she'd come in, and, and I would sit down, and then she would get her chair and put her chair in front of the door to get out. So, like, basically, you were locking trapped. Locking you in? Locking you in. Yeah, like, just sort of psychological, well, obviously psychological, but just, like, look at the picture of that. Like, she's, she is between you and the exit. You're, right. You can't get out. How interesting. I wonder what that was about. It was because it was a small room, but it was just like, uh, it was, I thought it was awful. Yeah. And well, I, you should have told her. Did you tell her? I did, yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. And That's the key too with your therapist. You have to tell them what you're actually feeling. No, absolutely. And also, I think it's really good that you get, my therapist said recently, we're having a, and he's, I really like, he's really funny. We have a laugh. But he, we were joking about something. He went, oh gosh, yes. You know, you, you're going to, you're eventually going to hate me, Alan. So let's just, let's get out of the way now or something like that. And I love that actually, that idea that you have to expect because I know there's that thing of people falling in love with a therapist yeah. and putting too much onto them and you know the, 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 making them sort of deifying them in a way that's a big danger yeah it's called transference transference yes yeah. so wasn't that um, you know who I'm obsessed with is um, Winnicott I think he's absolutely great and he and he does what's the thing about the the, the, the something self uh, the, the oh, I can't remember but it's like a sort of a uh, it's a thing about the mother and your relationship with your mother and the other self how you keep us uh, so, but um yeah, I don't, I, I slightly uh, overcompensate sometimes with my therapist trying to sort of, I really like him, but also I think you've got to imagine that, you know, it's not always going to be rosy. Right. But, you know, it is actually a good sign sometimes when you are transferring like that, because it means you're actually doing something, doing some work. I mean, it depends on what the philosophy is of the therapist, obviously. Yeah. But some therapists are really like the transference is a good thing. When that happens, it means that they're making progress because mm-hmm. they're reforming relationships or going through these experiences that they need to do to re- like to repair the old relationship. I get it. Yeah. Like we're talking about, like we started with, with you trying to repair the first relationship mm-hmm. that with somebody who was angry yeah. with the newer relationships. Yeah. So it's almost like a way to do that for the therapist to walk you through a new relationship. Yeah. And show you what to do with that. I can see that. Those feelings. Um, My last one. We'll do this. It's so so delicious. What are you eating right now, just for the people listening? I'm having... For the listener. Avocado toast, but that was a piece of bread dunked in some sort of seeds. (laughs) You've got a little thing of salt and a little thing of seeds. Can you hear? (laughs) Um... But my last therapist, she would so love it when I said I had a dream. She would like shoot out of her chair <laughs> and then like, get her pad. Yes. And then, and so I would start to say, um, I had a dream. And then, and, and she would go, I'm like, no, I'm only kidding. <laughs> <laughs> That's excellent. So you did have a little, like a uh, sense of humor together. Oh yeah. That's I think nice. that's very important. I mean, my God. I mean, totally. I laugh a lot with my therapist. So you had women and men as therapists. Yeah. Any difference or? Um, well, I'm, not, I'm just thinking about this for the first time, but the, the really, I mean, there's been, no, it's, there's been different, uh, over the years, uh, different times in life and different things happening. But I think actually the ones that I, 
there's two that I think have really incredibly helped me, and they've both been men. But then there's, you know, uh, let's not say that the It doesn't women. mean that's why. No. Right. But, but I feel, I used to feel like I wanted, um, I, I, I sort of thought, oh, I should have a man because, it's, you know, I, 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 I don't want to be, I, I don't want to sort of charm and just, because I used to do that. I used to sort of charm them and kind of not get away from the point by being charming and talking, you know, diverting. And, but I can do that with men as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so it doesn't really follow. So, but actually, I think that's the thing. Once you realise that you do that, yeah, I mean, it's like having a trainer at the gym. I'm, just, I, I now have this remote trainer. I get a little app, and he sends me videos and things, and it's much better for me because I, at the gym, I just chat and I'm charming and waste time, so that you don't have to do the exercises to make the hour go faster. Yes, and um, so I, I realise I can do that. If there's things I don't want to do, I can completely charm people. And yeah, and you have that. You just did this like smile thing where your whole face lit up, and it was like you're doing it again. Nobody can see it who's listening, but it's. <laughs> It is interesting. You could do that even just with a look on your face. And yeah. obviously you like to talk and can charm. But so are you, is that something that just comes out normally that you like to be like that? Uh, uh, yeah, I think it is. I think it is. I think I do. But in certain situations, I know I do it more because I want to either filling a, you know, it's maybe it's expected of me in a certain situation or you've got to kind of lead the thing or you want to just not do the thing that you're there's to do, you know. Uh-huh. Well, like the gym. Like the gym, yeah. Or, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. so interesting. But I have to say that the 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 a therapist I had said this one of the amazing things I remember I, I, was I went I, I remember saying I don't know why I'm here. I don't know. I mean, I, I know I've come back to therapy and I've understood, I thought I've got to get back, but I actually just don't really understand why. And she said, oh, you're here because your father's dying and you want to make peace with him before you die. he dies. And that was t- true and kind of obvious, but it was such a moment of clarity for me that just someone just said it. Oh, that's what you're doing, Alan. Your dad's going to die and you need to have some sort of... Um, peace with that mm-hmm. and like and, and uh, before he goes and, and it was so that was you know kind of just one thing like that can be an amazing yeah. so so enlightening and that also helped you focus right in on the job that you were trying to do absolutely that was, that's exactly why I was there excuse me and I feel it really allowed me to you know get get to it yeah and I did I, it was really good I feel I, I, because uh, I did. I mean, I, I'd already sort of said I'm not going to see you again to him. I'd, I'd done that, but there was a lot of other stuff all needed to be resolved or uh-huh. settled or discussed. You know. Look at that! Just like that, it helped like redirect you, and that was that. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I'm going to get to another. Go another one, yeah. Okay. Familiarity breeds contempt. That's totally true as okay. well. Okay. Why? I've I've found that. Uh, you have t- I found that in certain times in my life and there's one of them is actually right now that you know people close to you I mean we all can take each other for granted and um, especially if you've if you've been if you've had a role uh, in your relationship the same same role for a long time and I found that with some uh, some friends and, and work people over the you know that uh, there's you have to shake it up you have to actually think oh they're actually behaving towards me in a way that's actually n- not appropriate for our, our, our situation or something like, why have I let this get to this point? You know, there I'm allowing, and I, it's usually, I take responsibility for it because I've allowed it. And it's, I'm more, I'm usually very much a sort of a provider person. I'm, I'm kind of like a, you know, I, you know, I, I kind of, I, I encourage people to let me look after them or to, um, you know, I like I like making yeah, you're people a caregiver. Feel, I'm a caregiver, uh-huh. and so eventually, though, sometimes you have to like go. Okay, uh, it's, you know, like now you've cut, you, too far, and um, don't take it don't take it for granted. And I've, I've I've noticed that a couple of times just with people I've worked with and with and with some friends over the years. Okay, so and this isn't to, just an intimate relationship then with a lot of people. It's it's intimate, but it's a work relationship can be intimate too. But it's it's happened several times, and you have to just reboot. That's one of the things about getting older. You see patterns, mm-hmm. and you and you can learn from them. And I think what you have to do is to reboot your relationship with that person. So how do you out. reboot? You have to talk to them and say communication. Yeah, like you have to say you're 
I mean, I used it recently. I said familiarity has bred contempt. And you're... That's what you said to the person? Yeah, and Look at you. You're cheating me in a way that I, is not acceptable to me as a friend or let alone as someone, you know, an employee or something. So let's... Let's just change how we are with each other. Let's uh, maybe not, let's not work with each other for a while or let's just be friends or do, do, do. But let's just look at this has happened. And I had some examples and um, we just, you know, that was it. And it felt much so good to get it off my chest. Yeah. And it felt so good to be able to say, this is why I'm changing this. I'm, re- I'm re- reassessing how we interact, what our roles are. Now, how did the person on the other end take it? That time, pretty well. Yeah, pretty well. And were you able to start, or are you starting to redefine the yeah, relationship? I think so. I think so. Yeah, it's an ongoing thing. It's been a little while now, but I think it's going quite well. So that's interesting because I do think that a lot of people, their first instinct would be to drop the person. Yes. Rather than to not only just de- redefine it, but actually go to that person and discuss redefining it together. I don't think that's typical. I don't think a lot of people do that. No. But I, I do, I'm, I'm, I just also, you know, I, 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 I when I've done that, I, I love the people and I, I think as well, another thing you learn about getting older is that, you know, there are people in uh, your friends that you just that are, are, make you furious, yeah. like your family, you know, it's like, that, that, but you've, they've been your friend for so long. They're going to annoy you and they're going, but you love them and they're, and you're, they're part of your found family, you know? So unless you complete, I mean, I, I don't want to get these people completely out of my life. I want them to behave differently towards me. Yeah. I want them to remind, I want them to, to be reminded that of what, why we were friends in the first place, not just because I'm this kind of, you know, person who right. is a caregiver or does all the, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. But you're very self-aware also, obviously, cause you can see yourself doing that and you can yeah. see it happening in the relationship and you can see that we need to redo this. Yeah. It's also good being aware. Like the thing when I said about being, being away, away. I, actually when I came back, it was more uh, cause I went straight into a situation where I was like, Oh, you know, right. So familiarity breeds contempt actually goes very well with absence makes a heart go fonder. Absolutely. I mean, I think it's the, the sort of two sides of the same coin. Right. Okay, so this is what I want to do. I want to make sure I get you out in time. But I'd like to do a couple of these. You're really good with these sayings, I think. So let's do a couple of them on video. And that will be the promo teaser. Okay. So we'll keep recording and it'll probably run on the podcast and on the video. Um, And then just any... any, no, I'm not even going to ask you that. I mean, any thoughts on uh, other things that have I, first of all, have I asked you things that you've been asked before? Oh, shoot. N- and no, no, uh, no, I haven't. I mean, no. Really? Yeah. In this whole time? Yeah. I mean, like we talked a little bit about the, 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 the TV show thing. We verged on that. Right, we well, talked we about the fact that. that, yeah. But we no, cover that. all the stuff about therapy and stuff. No, I, I, I love talking about that. And I, and I, I don't normally get asked about that. I don't think that you believe me when I said I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to not ask you the same questions. I was a, yeah, bring, You're it, a little bring skeptical. it, lady. Yeah, let's see. I'll be the judge. <laughs> okay, so let's go up front. Let's, okay. do, let's take these. Are you done eating? Or mm-hmm. You can come back to it and bring it with yeah. you after, but let's just take this right up and I'll just have to set take up this the camera. Machine. I'm going to take the machine. Are you going to take it, it for me? Awesome, thank you. Ooh. How do you feel about the podcast? Uh, podcast, I feel like one of these things where I, 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 I usually like them when I do them, but I just feel like, oh my God, could just everybody have to have a podcast nowadays? Do you know what I mean? It's like, remember when blogs were happening, everybody had a blog and now it's podcasts and I sort of feel, and the thing I don't like about podcasts, I will tell you, is the, it's like the thing that why I don't, what I don't like about talk shows. Like, why do we have to listen to the people who host them blab on about what they've done today when actually you're there to do, interview someone? Can't we just go straight to the interview? It's like these, the monologues on late night shows are so I agree. boring. It's, a, it's, a, it's an outmoded structure, I think. Well, and like on podcasts, when you think, so how are you today? Oh, well, I bought some really nice jeans and oh I had blah blah buns for tea think shut up who cares sorry I couldn't agree more I, if there's a podcast like that I'm just gonna skip that part me too yeah but I don't do the late night shows the talk shows at all it's the opposite of what my style is as you know by now oh, yes because we just dribbled into it without even doing anything exactly yeah. and not only that but like I like to do the deep the non-superficial yeah yeah I always think it's funny when you go on a talk show and you're like oh you're yeah, the first guest that's like a big deal you know 
And even though I would think the last guest would be a more of a deal because like you're the waiting for you to come on. It's different in America. Right. But uh, you're like, oh, I'm first guest. That means I'll be home by blah, blah. You know, I'll be out quick. No. It's like monologue, sketches, like two commercial breaks before they get to you. Oh, so it's a big, long. It's boring. Yeah, 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 yeah. And also, I mean. But do you watch them too? No. I don't really watch television. None. I mean, I watch. I had a feeling you were going to say, "Well, you're so busy too." I'm busy. I, wa- I watch like I watch things. I have a we have a room in our, ho- uh, our hotel, our house where we go to watch specifically to watch TV. So it's like a destination. So we've been watching Fleabag. Oh, okay. That's been. Really, yeah. I've been I, so I, I hear things. I sort of think, you know, we. It's just not a thing. I don't go into my house and put the TV on, but I certainly don't watch. Um, I mean, to be honest, half of the things I'm in both in films and television, more than half, I would never see if I weren't in them. Oh, I'm sure. I could have guessed that before yeah. I even met you. <laughs> <Yeah>. Okay, do <dude. laughs> <laughs> Right? So, Only half of them, though? Um, no, more than half, probably. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I don't... The things I watch are... Uh, well, you know, sometimes I would watch well, it. Well, like what? Well, Fleabag, obviously, that's the style that you would watch. I like that. Yeah, so like, I, I'm Fleabag I've been watching and Schitt's Creek. Oh, been Stop. watching, yeah. I am so hooked on Schitt's Creek right it's now. It's funny, isn't it? Yes. I'm in the last season. Oh, you are? Well, I'm only like season three or two or something. Okay, so got ages to go. Don't tell me. My favorite. But last now. week, I had a part, uh, my friend had a birthday party, and the evening theme was uh, Schitt's Creek. Get out of here! I so was just telling clothes. my daughter like last week. I said there should be a theme park, like a Schitt's Creek theme park, a and park. we go oh, in, that's really good. and you know, Alexis is there, and Johnny, and Moira. Well, they have, everyone had these amazing clothes. And Twyla and everybody should be in the theme park. You could go in and experience Schitt's Creek. That would be hilarious. Right? There's a really funny video, actually, of talking about the clothes. Um, because da- um, Catherine O'Hara uh, based her, oh, herself on um, Daphne Guinness. The, she was a sort of, you know, she's this fashion socialite lady. And uh, she was a friend of Alexander McQueen's and everything. And it's actually hilarious when you... When you see this little video on, on YouTube about placing Catherine O'Hara in all these insane costumes. Get out of here. Mm. I did not know that she did that. Yeah. But the costumes are so good and the so way good. she plays it and her voice. Catherine O'Hara is like a genius. Like, you know, at the end of uh, For Your Consideration, it's one yeah. of the Christopher Guest movies about an Oscar campaign. She does a thing and it's like she's had a facelift and she does. She speaks to these people uh, and it's just so... Like the, my favorite thing of the combination of hilarious, desperate, and heartbreaking all at the same time. Yeah, and she does it all, and she's not, she's not had a facelift. She's not even got tape or anything. She just does it with her face. She's amazing. She's a genius. They're all so talented, really. Oh, every single one of them. Oh, like I um, have the the people I've most geeked out on yeah. are Christopher Guest, uh huh, Eugene Levy, mm-hmm. and Fred Willard. Oh, Fred Willard I is just funny too. Completely. Those are your your people. Yeah, and then mm-hmm. Catherine had I mean, I mean Catherine had actually all that lot and Parker Posey, like she's a friend of mine. So I I I didn't geek out quite as much when I but you know waiting for Guffman. Yeah, is one of my favorite films, and it also taught me a lot about America because I I realized if that is being parodied, then it must exist. You see? Yes. And so because when you've come well, to this yeah, country, of course. you don't. You, there's so much to understand. I'm still learning. I'm still feeling. Not quite up to speed. I think you're doing pretty well. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> okay, so let's do one more. You have to oh, go yes, yes, So let's yes. do one more. Okay. <laughs> Clothes make the man. I like this and I don't. In that I feel that... I, I have an issue. I love clothes and I love uh, dressing up. And I, and I do, you know... I do... I'm a bit of a fashion, what do you call it, a clothes horse. Yeah. Um, but I like, I don't like, what I don't like about fashion is how exclusive it is. Because basically it's saying, a lot of f- fashion, I think the fashion world and the fashion industry, it sort of says to people, you can't have this. And, but therefore you should want it. Do you see what I mean? Of course, it's a business. And I don't like that. Mm -hmm. I don't like that as an ethos. Like the exclusivity of it. Yeah. So I don't like, and I found more and more, you know, when you have a a choice, like I, I, 
I like I like designers that, that are you know there's a vegan designer called Brave Gentleman that I wear and I really like that and then this these people I'm wearing today are called Paisley and Greg and I like them because they're not that expensive you know uh-huh. they're really stylish and nice but they're not super expensive things like that become more important to me that I you know the message you're sending with what you're wearing okay so but, that that's getting to the message you're sending with what you're wearing yes but so and also I think how I use clothes I mean I you know, I don't normally go around like this, um, but like when I'm doing a thing like this, I'm, I'm being, I'm dressing up, you know, and I think you've got to be, you're being a larger than life version of yourself. I'm playing Alan Cumming today. You're doing a good job. <laughs> I got the look down. <laughs> <laughs> look at this. Excellent. Alan, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. This is fun. Oh, was it? Yeah. Did yeah. I ask you anything? No, you did. You no, asked me very really? good. You did not ask me a question that I feel I've been asked before. Okay. So after this, after we're done, how are you going to feel about this today? I feel like I should give you like $250 for my therapy session. <laughs> Do you think my rate is only $250? <laughs> I thought I was getting a discount. <laughs> Friends and family. <laughs> That was Alan Cumming. Pick up Alan's memoir, the entire Schitt's Creek series, and other fun gifts and merch, as well as my favorite things. You can do it super easily and super fast on my Amazon page. Just click on the link in today's podcast notes or go to reallyfamouspodcast.com. I'm Kara. Thank you for hanging out with Alan and me. An exciting new lineup of guests is now queued up and waiting for you. So please stay tuned. And remember to subscribe if you're not already.